Hello, lovely people. Hi, gods and goddesses. This is Trish from Light of Lemuria. And I'm Michal Kali Griggs from Tantra Movement, for those who don't know us yet. Today we will uh, introduce you to Tantra BDSM. And we do it as a part of the series of masterclass where we would support mainly the couples to become more happier, more loving, more stronger and more conscious in their relationships. So when we look at, let's have a look at Tantra and BDSM and let's look at the connection between them both and what we see in, in this is that there is an erotic polarity at play here that both have similar traits and when we look at Tantra, Tantra works with the polarities of the divine feminine, divine masculine and in BDSM they, they look at the polarities and one of the polarities is slave and master, submissive, dominant energies. And we find that these polarities are quite similar. When we look at Tantra, Tantra, the masculine is penetrative. He is the master, the dominator. And I'm not talking about a male or female, I'm talking about the masculine energy, uh, which we all represent, and the feminine energies, which we all represent. We all have both. So um, when we look at the feminine, like in Tantra, in BDSM is the same as the surrender, uh, to surrender to the energy for that penetrative energy, the slave or the submissive type of energies. So for me, I find them quite similar and the difference between BDSM and Tantra BDSM is we're bringing more A, more love, B, more consciousness, C, more awareness. Definitely with Tantra BDSM, we look at more the after play is very crucial and very important. And of course, the foreplay. The foreplay is all these three parts of lovemaking is, is the most important important part and, and I would say with Tantric BDSM it, it the aftercare is is the most important is, is coming back to the self making sure that your partner is, is cared for and loved and um, nurtured and bringing up anything together if anything came through in your love making anything that might have triggered you anything that may have pleasured you and um, really, really sharing. Also, a very important aspect what Tantra BDSM brings it's a liberation. That's what also the main aspect of what Tantra is all about. As in Tantra, we are not stuck with our roles, what we are conditioned into by the society. So, for example, with male being only male, the boys don't cry, and women being stuck in the kitchen and so on. We are about liberating from those yeah. concepts. In the same way, Tantric BDSM is about liberating ourselves from the concept of one person being dominant and one person being submissive. That's what makes the BDSM Tantric. Equal exchange of roles. The same, one time you are slave, one time you are the master. And you would switch this role and the capacity and ability to switch these roles in any moment and playing uh, with the balance, whatever it is, but not being also stuck in the balance, mm -hmm. that's the freedom what Tantra gives us. When we talk about polarities, the key to the creation or for that strong attraction with these polarities is the complete opposite. Is it's what brings the dynamic attraction to your connection. Is these these polar opposites of polarity: the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the submissive, the dominant, the slave, the master. 
this it, and going into these parts, it actually brings so much more passion and, and fire and brings that sexual dynamic into lovemaking and into the bedroom. And uh, bring us as well the wholeness because when we go, uh, when we are able, both of us within uh, ourselves, and uh, but also we switching both uh, between those roles, uh, we are able to go from one extreme to another extreme, and then switch it upside down, and be in another extreme and another of polarity. Then we within ourselves, but also within our relationship, we create the wholeness. Mm. Union. There is no like roles that one play with another, but it's like the roles exchanging. So we become one. We feel this allness. If we are stuck just in one polarity, like uh, most of the men, uh, it's uh, conditioned to be only in the so-called unmature masculine characteristics. It makes him not complete because if he's not able to open his heart, uh, being vulnerable or to receive, uh, or to receive. he relies uh, to feel this completeness outside, looking for the woman to give it to him. But this is yeah. like a bit uh, blindfold because you uh, start to form the relationship out of need, not out of like, hey, I'm complete, I want to share my love. But you basically, I need something what I'm lacking. Uh, so you are attracting, this magnet is attracting, but the, Yes, if it's out of need, it's blind, the road uh, never going to be uh, feeling complete because it's outside, we rely on someone else. But if we uh, find it within ourselves, then we can use this magnet as a like, conscious play. So mm -hmm. we can use these polarities, we can play and then we can exchange the roles and then we can feel the wholeness and completeness within ourselves. Yeah. And, and I want to say probably 10% of the world, really, they aren't switches. Switches in the BDSM realm is people that are actually able to go into dominant and submissive. And then we're around about, I, I would say truly, around about 10% of the population that only are fixated in one spot. That's okay, it's completely okay if you have your own niche, that's okay, because you'll always attract uh, for a dominant, for a man who goes into penetrative master, then he will always attract that submissive slave type of um, surrendered partner. But what we're talking about today is to be able to go into totality within yourself and to be able to explore these polarities within yourself and your partner. So like Michal was saying, when um, one partner is in their penetrative dominant energy for the other person to feel that energy to be able to go into play and to go into that lovemaking of to be able to surrender and, and really bringing that attraction into the bedroom. What I make the BDSM tantric is the same what I make tantra tantric. One of the uh, essential basic of tantra for us is the freedom from the addiction to the peak orgasms. So freedom from the ejaculation, attachment and attachment to the clitoral orgasm. Mm -hmm. Through those we lose the energy and uh, Tantra is about gaining the energy. So. With that uh, masterclass, we would like to guide people who are already on the level of being free from this addiction. Mm -hmm. So in other videos, also in, on our online course Tantra for Couples, we guide you exactly step by step how to get there. How to free yourself. How to free yourself. Mm -hmm. And we guide you through that 21 challenge, uh, 49 day challenge process to completely liberate yourself. And then, when you are free from desires, when you start to make love out of love out of choice, then you are able to go into advanced levels like tantric BDSM. Uh, we what we guide you into is advanced level uh, because it's very important. If you do something out of desires, 
This, maybe you already notice, maybe you are already conscious uh, and aware about that, that you are keep chasing the desires all the time, all the time, all the time. Whatever you do, like uh, you can do like uh, Tantra, but you, if you are still addicted from ejaculation, you would still use the beautiful tools of melting hug or uh, eye gazing to just get another fix on your desires and there would be unfortunately not enough love because you will have to chase another desire another and if the desires is not enough then you will go for looking for some king uh, bdsm and if it's out of the desire you will look for harder harder simulations and that can go even a bit wrong sometimes so we like to guide you into tantric BDSM, what will strengthen your relationship, what will empower more love with your partner, with your beloved, what will build up the trust between you, what would heal the parts what are not healed, some pain, some past memories or whatever, what would empower your partner, what would give the space for some emotions what usually we suppress and all of this, it's all to empower the connection with you. It's to use the, that potential. So when we are talking and why our passions are about Tantric BDSM, we actually would like to teach couples or even singles that want to go into that sacred union or using Tantra in the Tantra and using this Tantra BDSM to heighten your spirituality, your, your sexuality and not just use these tools to go out into BDSM dens and conscious kink areas, uh, like um, communities. I mean there are beautiful conscious kinks and there are beautiful Tantra BDSM communities and there's some unsavory ones as well. So it's really using your intuition here. We would like you to practice in the bedroom first, get your empowerment, your knowledge, your practice, and feeling into your own energies, what play, what 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 do you like, what don't you like in, in BDSM, Tantric BDSM. You know, it's, it's not about full-blown fetishes where you chasing, like Michal said, chasing on desires where you cannot stop. The highs never get fulfilled. You're always chasing, chasing the highs. When we come to Tantric BDSM, it's completely different. When you come with a consciousness, you are so fulfilled. Your eroticism, your eros is so fulfilled. When we play with BDSM in the Tantric way, that we do teach is that it brings so much more sexual potency where it builds up so so much and we don't want this to be explosive and run on desires you know these this energy this fueling desires we want this to be brought up into the higher chakras to be brought up into higher states of consciousness where you are meeting god within goddess within where you are invigorating your light body your chakras your meridians your aura your loved one your beloved one your heart your world so they are what we teach is very powerful tools to bring into the bedroom and love making but we want you to use this in a tantric way and it's it's beautiful we guide you into sacred sexuality, what is the most beautiful, most close, most intimate, most energizing expression of more and more unconditional love. So even when we tie the person into the bed or we slap her buttocks or whatever, we do it always out of love because we know that it brings the pleasure and it will build the trust that the action was not so hard, but it brought some emotions what were welcome mm -hmm. to feel at that moment, what would be suppressed staying in that person. 
we use it as a sacred tool to uh, go deeper into our dark shadows, yeah. out of our comfort zone. Yeah. But playing uh, completely with the trust and love is so crucially important. Yeah. Because the more you trust in your relationship and the energy that is ex exchanged, the more deeper you go in love making. I mean, if if Mihal is playing with me and I go into my submissive energy, I and I love both. I'm a switch, but if I do that, I surrender completely and I melt into nothingness and everything because I do have such trust with our partnership and we bring such consciousness into that and the more you surrender the more you trust in the dynamics and your polarity and your partnership the more you go into that uh, the more you go into more heightened sexual erotic energy when you liberate from the desires, you just flow with these energies and you are not attached to your preferences. We may have preferences that, oh, it's easier for us to be in that role and it's more challenging with the other role. But with a tantric understanding, that the bigger challenge, the biggest grow. And it really feels like that. The bigger grow, then the bigger satisfaction out of the going through the challenge. So there is no something like, oh, I don't like it, so I get stuck in this one role. You just allow to play, and this love to your partner is also supports you on this because when you know that oh maybe it's not my preference, but she likes it so much, I worship her at that moment, and you know it's like doesn't matter that it's out maybe of my comfort zone. Out of love, I feel like it's great to whatever she wish at that moment. And we just play with this, if we have this attitude of love from both of us, as it just flows. It's just love, exchanging, yeah. like it's like beautiful flow of love between. As long as it's not pushing the boundaries. Of course. As long as you're okay, and even if it's new, something that your partner's like introduced something new to the bedroom, and you've never done it before, Obviously, if it is going to push your boundaries, do not go there. Do not traumatize yourself. Tantric BDSM is far from traumatization. It's growing it healing love it. It, and healing. Yes. 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 This uh, ability that um, every person can basically rise the palm to show, hey, slow down, or say a safe word to, hey, stop it immediately, whatever, it's going too far. Yeah. It's like that the condition that submissive person, slave, whatever role, have ability to uh, also like the giver, the master can also say, hey, this is too much for me, I don't uh, go there. And this ability to be in fully control of saying no, it goes too far, I'm not feeling now to go further with this, and being feeling that this is going to be always respected, having that trust, it's a must playing with it. It builds the trust that in the end, like we just feel each other, we see each other face and we see already, okay, this goes too far. We go into the state that we, yes, we become one and we feel like, okay, this uh, doesn't feel uh, good for my partner. I can feel it. Uh, yeah. So it's... Uh, because you know, you won't go uh, any deeper. Yes. Yeah. The more you both are in bliss and, and in that state, you'll go even deeper into lovemaking mm -hmm. and tantric lovemaking. Um, I wanted to share too, um, it's really important to express your emotions and feelings as well, either before, maybe during, maybe you want to keep it in, in the role in lovemaking and tantric, but definitely after. There's one thing that I love and, and I do love this is when you do meet a new partner, or you are in a partnership, but to be able to express yourself before lovemaking. What are my boundaries? What do I love? What don't I love? What do I love beforehand, foreplay? What do I need? Um, especially men and women. Men, if you know, uh, pre-ejaculation, if you are prone to that, talking to the woman so she doesn't put any pressure on you to ejaculate or to, uh, to perform in a certain certain way. Women, what do you like? What 
do you need more touching of the rest of the body and not just into the straight into the genitals do you, what do you like and and what do you desire after do you enjoy the lingam in your yoni for a while do you what do you like what do you like to be caressed do you like to talk like what is it and it's really really important this is conscious this is tantric bdsm and especially bdsm you know we know this in society that so much of the population has come across sexual abuse or sexual predators so there are a lot of wounds going on when you sexually open up with another being you are not only just opening your physical body you're opening your emotional body your mental body your heart heart body your mental body your spiritual body your astral body you are sharing dna you are sharing every part you not only get uh, naked from your clothes but you uh, basically your soul get bare as well yeah a lot of consciousness needs to go into this and when i'm talking about it so a lot of people have a lot of wounds and sexual wounds so it's really really important you don't need to bare your soul completely unless you want radical honesty completely but we need to be aware of boundaries consent as well um going into tantra bdsm and, and going into that because um, we don't want to traumatize we want to invigorate bring healing and we don't want to heal you, you the last thing you want to do is heal your partner for say of their wounds you want to heal each other where you can raise the vibration up to into sacred union so you can go into the higher parts of yourself going into cosmic orgasms going into bringing the energy through the body and and allowing it to explode into your cells and your body and your partner and this is what it's all about it's it's bringing that pure excitement from tantric bdsm and bringing that energy up and allowing it to encompass your whole light body before any session what we would like to involve our kinky place or bdsm we speak about how we would like to see the session what we feel good about what we don't like but we accept from both sides maybe you would like to play with some fantasies maybe you would like to do some role playing it's good to speak out about how you would like to see it, mm -hmm. what you are feeling comfortable what are your limits where are your boundaries you speak both that's the tantric communication when one person is speaking and another is listening and then you switch the roles mm -hmm. you basically a bit negotiate maybe i don't feel comfortable with something so much but maybe i can try and it's still within my comfort zone i don't feel pushed when i'm asked mm -hmm. would you like to do that for me and then i can invite okay yes my, i may try out and see if, how i will feel maybe it will feel good in the end but you are not forced to do anything mm -hmm. and there is no pushing that's also like why it's so important to be free from the desires because then there is no pushing there is just acceptance yeah. and then when there is acceptance and trust then we can expand our limits and territories by ourselves naturally it expands when we build up the trust from session to session after one we are able to trust the person so much that okay yes try the things what maybe at the first time we were completely terrified but then we feel like oh actually we try something what is challenging it felt even nice and then we are a bit encouraged to check out what more is there so we basically expand in ecstasy grow in love and liberate the conditions that we didn't choose very often. When we look at kink, we, these days there's conscious kink. When, when we really strip it down, kink, it's about fantasy, it's about fetishes. When we're going into BDSM, um, you know, the slave and master. When you play in this area, it's funny because most of you are probably already doing this in the bedroom whether it is being dominant or being choking or 
pushing your partner down on the bed or they've got their hands wrapped around on the uh, pin to the bed. Or positions. 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 Uh, some of them they are like dominant from one side and some of them they are dominant uh, from the other side. Like, the missionary position is uh, the, when the male is dominant and uh, when the woman is on the top, it's the woman uh, in the dominant position. You can see that the liberation of the woman is happened, uh, very connected with the liberation from the conditioning where the missionary position was not only the option anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the sexual revolution brought us into the freedom. So BDSM, conscious kink, whatever you want to call it. We're calling it Tantric BDSM because we're bringing consciousness into this. And so when we look at this, the, there's so much, and you're probably already bringing this in, into the bedroom already, but it can be from, like Nihal said, the missionary position it could be in, and, and feeling into the polarities of this. Then you could also be inviting dirty talk. It could be inviting in handcuffs, shibari, toys, shibari, shibari ropes, um, tying each other up, toys, toys are always fun to play with, whips, spanking, spanking is a very common BDSM and there is an art to it, there's a beautiful art to it and it takes practice and we do teach this but there's such diversity and, and I, I guess what I'm trying to say is when people hear BDSM or kink, it's almost looked at as taboo. It's almost looked at as ooh, like almost a naughtiness to it. But I want to say, probably majority of people are already bringing this flavor into the bedroom, whether you know it or not. And, and it can be, and, and it can start with just the simple polarities to all the way up to dominatrix and, and getting your latex on and, and whipping and putting feet in the mouth and allowing them to be soft and, and whatever it is. There's all different types and it's just up to the person and your partner. What do you like to explore and what is your favorite? What is, it's, it's exploration and that's the fun in it. And this exploration uh, liberates us from the conditioning and maybe you will notice yourself, okay, I liberated myself from some conditioning and you could see how much freedom it gave uh, into your space and so maybe uh, some of you experienced going uh, first time uh, to the nude beach and uh, getting naked first time in the, your life in public and seeing like, wow, how much space, how much freedom from uh, some uh, chains, conditioning it gives to us. And, and, and we're so, saying, and we're saying not to go to any beach and be nude, but mm -hmm. obviously I mean, we, 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 want, we want everybody to be quite conscious of what they're doing and, and um, you know, if you do explore, I mean, there are a lot of people that love to explore and be adventurous outdoors. And that's another uh, tantric video sort of thing that can also go into love making as well. Whatever it serves you, this is one of the guidelines that I discovered at the beginning of my tantra. If two people love each other, and they do whatever they want to do and they do not harm but it's expression of love mm -hmm. nobody nobody can tell them that this is something else yeah. it's up to them to decide what is their expression and if they're happy with this it's up to them if uh, this masterclass we would like you to explore. Probably you already start to explore with something. So let it be this example of maybe the naked beach, but maybe the other one. Maybe you start to do something what before was out of your comfort zone. Explore, mm -hmm. bring some spice into mm -hmm. the bedroom with your partner because honestly, your partner will be desiring it and yourself as well. And you'll be surprised when you do communicate this how much what brings true or fantasies or, or things that you've always wanted to try or things that you actually love to do. It brings a whole new ball game into the bedroom. I would like to say when you speak out your truth from your inside, you always encourage the person to do the same. Use it this and I would suggest always the woman speak out first because she kind of draw where 
I feel comfortable mm. with this talk because it's also good that uh, we feel comfortable even if I will talk in the talks to respect our boundaries, our own, but also the feeling of other person. So basically, if the woman doesn't speak so openly about all the things what she wants to try <laughs> yeah, the and so just go black. <laughs> and, and then the man so so you yeah. get that feeling yes yeah. so you don't uh, t ask her for some uh, things what she don't want to even you but know but we don't want to bring any yeah. shame either yeah. we don't we, yes. it, it, it isn't just open be, just be yourself feeling, and, and just be feeling with the other person also. yeah yes. definitely you're such a gentleman for allowing the woman to go first but it, but it is it's, it's mm -hmm. about sharing what what you love and and um exploring Love making is, you know, exploring the heart, exploring that sexual energy, and bringing consciousness union to both energies and, and expanding. To summarize uh, a bit, or to kind of put it in order, we would like to share the guidelines what make the tantra BDSM, tantra BDSM. First, it's balance between the roles exchange. So the same amount of being submissive and the same amount of being dominant. So when we speak about the same amount, it's not fixated like, oh, you set up the alarm and so on. It's just go with the flow. Whatever flow it is for you, yes? It could be maybe the flow for one person. It can be changing from one every 15 minutes, every half an hour. The roles from the other ones maybe it could be okay today i play the slave tomorrow i play the master let balance also not be the stacking position because in spirituality we also miss this where there is balance you have to stay in balance mm -hmm. no but tantra is not about being stuck in one position tantra is about playing around with all of it if there is balance it's create harmony mm -hmm. if you see at the yin and yang symbol there is balance. It's uh, second, always out of love and with a lot of love. So this is important. This is not to fulfill your desires. It's to express the love to my mm -hmm. and to worship the goddess and to honor her. And when I spank her ass, I do it because I know she like it. Even if I'm in the dominant role, master role, and she's my slave, dirty slave, or whatever thing, I do it out of love. Everything is out of love. Everything is with this consciousness mm -hmm. that, hey, we don't accumulate the person because we like to feel superior. We, we do it because uh, it may release some aspects of our life, our emotions, and we or the partner who is accumulated in the conscious way can go through something, even heal yourself yeah. from some past traumas or liberate yourself from yeah. some conditionings and so on and so on. And like when I go into my dominatrix, I am quite going to my master with me how it's I might dominate him but it's not out of hate it's not like I hate men or I oh, I want to hurt him it's to bring out empowerment and, and to to bring these these flavors and it's being conscious of this being conscious of not going into the darker parts of yourself or bringing out ego and bringing out unmet wounds within this is not what BDSM, Tantric BDSM is about at all. It's, it's yeah. about love. healing, love, building the trust yeah. and not traumatizing and or re-traumatizing. Yeah. It's not the power game. It's uh, actually something uh, completely opposite. It's uh, actually uh, a lot about healing our unhealthy ego, unhealthy minds into the healthy ego, into unconditional love, into healthy mind, being in the present, in the consciousness, not being taken over by selfish desires. desires yeah. Very, very, very crucial, very important. Another third guideline is total control of the submissive person 
on everything is happening in the scene. So the person has full control to raise the palm, to show slow down, it goes too far, mm -hmm. or to say safe word, to stop immediately. Yeah, and we, it's full trust and it's no discussion, no pushing. We know that the, the dominator, the dominatrix, they ultimately take the lead in the bedroom. When they go into that energy, it is, and the submissive goes into um, going with that energy and, and surrendering into that power, that master energy. But what Michal is saying is remembering in Tantra BDSM that submissive slave surrender energy has control over everything as well completely when when things are too much to, to raise the palm to be verbal like to be verbal um, to use your voice to say no no I don't like that. and and it's then it is up to the dominatrix or dominator to realize that and then change the dynamics so dominator is not about being dominate dominating or dominatrix all the way through to there is such a beautiful art to it when there's a peak of firmness and and uh, penetrative master type of energy and then there's a real a real softness with it and then uh, so there's a <laughs> there's a beautiful dynamic it doesn't have to be all the way through but the key is is to feel into your partner their feelings their emotions their eyes say it all their facial expressions and for both parties to be verbal to, to use your voice to be able to express um, to cause more healing than more trauma for example to bring me to the edge of fear it's very liberating and healing. Uh, give the space to the fear, what normally we are not comfortable to go to. But because I trust my beloved that she do everything out of love, I can go very deep into feeling that fear because I know I trust her and she also do it out of love. So I know that she will bring me maybe to the edge of the fear, but not over the edge. So that she would far. not cross the line because we know in that way we can traumatize or traumatize ourselves but if it's just before it's that's that's the beauty the fourth guideline it's always work of trust that you could not lose yeah. exactly what we so said yes it's about rebuilding the trust and of course let's be human and we are not perfect and so on. and sometimes it may happen that we do something what Bring the person to, oh, this I didn't expect it. Oh, no, I don't feel comfortable. When the person is rising the palm or saying safe word, you remember, you imprint this into your being that, okay, this we don't go there anymore. This I have to pay more attention because if I do it again, then the trust can be lost much more because the person already asked us and we, if we do not hear that's very important so so with that too so when you're bringing them like i said for the art of the bdsm it's it's when when you do go too far the mm. more let's say the more pain you inflict or the more heightened eroticism that you bring into the bedroom and, and you do go past that point the more nurture is needed so if I brought Michal past that edge is to really bring him back into mm -hmm. a loving a loving space and to hold that and not to go back into it again just because out of desires but to really bring that person back in and, and really care, but maybe go to another point or another part dynamic. of the um, dynamic play. Mm -hmm. But but always the you've always got to match the energy too. So if you're bringing in full whipping and bringing a bit of pain, then you know that your aftercare that nurture needs to be at the same balance. There, there is a beautiful art to tantric beating sound which we do teach, we will be teaching. But you always need that balance.
The fifth uh, guideline is that uh, time to be design is uh, always a space to express, to feel emotions what we usually are suppressed. So it is a space to exercise our fear, our anger, our uh, sadness. Maybe you can uh, start to feel some past traumas and so on. And to explore, to do it in the safe way. This is the part of how it can have a great healing potential. That when we bring the person into those states, but with knowing that submissive person is in full control, then it can bring to the situation where the past memories, past traumas, past sexual wounds can be healed because the person fully trusts that the person who is doing maybe similar things what happened in the past by replicating the same or similarity of the situation, it can bring tremendous healing potential. Yeah. That the person who had this trauma somewhere in the body can release these emotions and let it go, and not being affected by that. Yeah. So about the spanking, for example. Uh, we have a lot of, in some countries especially more, a lot of uh, trauma with the spanking because that was the punishment what many children get when they were naughty. In many countries it's still normal that you get spanked when you misbehave. And it's abuse because nobody, no any child would uh, give voluntarily uh, yourself uh, to being spanked. Uh, those fantasies we develop later on and uh, very often when we are conscious Actually, those fantasies are there to actually heal this wounds. past, these wounds. Yeah. So very often, the spanking in the conscious way, when the, the person uh, is trusted to you, it can release this childhood trauma from the past. For example, and there are many other ones. There, there could mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. for instance, sexual assault, and the person goes out and loves BDSM or orgies or but uses that wound and almost spiritually bypasses the wound. There's so much healing that needs to be done and the conscious tantric BDSM is bringing this wound, if you do have wounds, or, or to bring it into a healing part of yourself, an awareness of and a depth of yourself as well and an acceptance. If you do need, if there are traumas that do come up, I do, do seriously suggest that you get um, professional help throughout your lovemaking and tantric. As tantric, it opens all doors. There is no hiding in tantra. You start to open and unlock every portal of yourself, and it's it's a path, a life path. And um, and throughout your journey. You know, if you do get stuck on different things, don't allow your partner to become the counsellor or the healer. Obviously, they need to hold your space. But you actually need to be getting, um, seeking help outside. Putting the role of healer on the partner who actually didn't choose for it and uh, is not uh, professionally skilled, it's putting a lot of pressure on the person and in the result, uh, in not best outcomes. Yeah, so I think your lover should never be your complete healer and that's why there's called professionals out there, psychologists, whatever field it may be in. But your lover, but, and we know this, and I know this in personal experiences, when you a healer and you're healing your partner sexually or they're traumatized or they've got things going on, you don't want to become the healer, what happens in the dynamic is you're trying to go up maybe in sacred union or going up energetically, lifting the vibration, but they're stuck here. So you're only going to go so far. When you actually meet somebody that, and we're not all completely healed anyway, we're human. We're in human experiment, aren't we? But when we meet a person that actually is conscious enough to work on their own shit, their own shadow, their own wounds, but comes with a complete consciousness and acceptance and allowance and surrender to the process, then you actually get to carry each other or you bring each other up 
in such a, a beautiful way. And with our love making, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it goes into such sacred union because we're conscious enough to work on our own, our own things. We would definitely consciously share our things, but I guess the thing is, you never put it on your partner to take the responsibility of your own wounds or your unmet wounds, your unmet shadows. This is not what Tantric BDSM is or Tantric is. It's not about that at all. Another guideline at the end, we end with uh, lots of lots of love. Mm. After play is very crucial. We can go through the hell and uh, <laughs> whatever, uh, any emotions and so, but afterwards, as more into the hell we went, with both of us, with one of us more in the other moments, we give as much love as possible. Now bringing that person back into their body, allowing them, because we know in lovemaking, we actually, it, lovemaking is the most potent energy that it's one of the easiest energies to open your chakras, your spiritual auric field. So when you go into love making, especially Tantra BDSM, you are going to be out of your body energetically and erotically. So it's about allowing that person or both people to come back home to their bodies. And I, I think we don't give enough time for this. And it's the, probably one of the most important parts of Tantric love making and Tantric BDSM is to take the time to actually come back into the body, making sure that the chakras are, are feeling not closed, but not exposed either, where you don't feel um, that vulnerable, that the other person is really looked after and cared for. Giving them melting hugs and being with the person, especially if there was some emotional release, uh, supporting uh, what you went through, and uh, not in the way that uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. It's fine, but really like holding the space, holding and, the space. Uh, if the um, person needs to express more afterwards because sometimes it goes uh, some healing is uh, reflecting, uh, releasing afterwards. Give it a space, let the person to uh, release everything and being there for them, not uh, going to smoke cigarettes or whatever straight away or checking your face before you do it. Just be there yeah. full. It's so important to give them full presence in that moment. Women, if you do like your men to stay in you, or your women to stay in you, or to, to be held in your yonis, then ask for it. Men that have just been tied up, if you, especially men, especially going out of the comfort zones of the masculine role and being tied up and then being so vulnerable and out of source, allow your that man, grabbing that man and holding him so he comes back to safety and comes back to acceptance in himself, in the love, in, in who he is and, and really bringing back to presence to know that it's okay, he's okay, you're okay and it was beautiful. And small advice for mature and masculine people is uh, that actually being vulnerable as a man and letting uh, allow yourself to cry out, express your emotions, that's what makes you mature and masculine. Mm -hmm. And that's it's more great and function to be there than in the disco club. And that will make you complete and free from being stuck in the roles. It will open your heart for it's one of the major steps into grow as a mature, defined man. If you are interested, we have a Tantra couples retreat online course that teaches yoni massage, lingam massage, all the beautiful steps uh, for the Tantra path. We also do classes in Tantric BDSM as well as Divine Masculine 
the, the Brotherhood corner of uh, workshops and also the Divine Feminine workshops as well. So we've got the links below. So if you would love to connect with us, definitely connect in with us and really start to explore Tantric BDSM, your lovemaking bring excitement back into the bedroom. Our intention is to keep the honeymoon to all life and give it the shade to all the couples. Cool, I think. Let's see it. Blessing. Thank you for your watching, for your attention. It was a pleasure to share with you. Thank you, Thank you, Blessing. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm.